While it looks very impressive, Mount Washington is not even close to the tallest Cascade peaks. But mountain height does not always equal technical difficulty, and this one is much more dangerous than many taller peaks. Join me in this adventure as we climb one of Oregon's most technical peaks, Mount Washington. At just under 7,800 feet, Mount Washington is one of the shorter Central Oregon Cascade Peaks. It sits between the Three Sisters and Three Finger Jack. Three Finger Jack is very similar to Washington in shape, size, and difficulty. Washington is most commonly summited from the north side. The trailhead starts on the PCT near Big Lake. The trail goes through a burned forest and up the north ridge, which meets with the final summit spire. The climb started early morning in June of 2022. The first couple miles were along the PCT until it split off to the climber's trail. Other than a pile of rocks, the climber's trail was barely marked. With a vague trail covered in snow, we would choose our own path to get to the ridge. After more elevation, we met a common part of our alpine habitats, the white bark pine. These special mountain trees are endangered in many places due to fire, disease, and invasive bugs. With changing conditions, slips, and cave-ins, mountain snow travel is always a bit scary. But sometimes snow can be more dependable than crumbly rock, and it's just plain fun. With most of the snow melted, we didn't bring crampons for our boots, but we did have ice axes, which came in handy. After some fun in the snow, it was time for everyone's least favorite mountain terrain, scree. At this point, we needed to be more cautious. Things were getting steeper with more cliff exposure and not all the handholds were dependable. Making our way up the ridge, there were a few options for routes. This snowbank made us second guess our choice. The steep exposure was too much and there was no good place to protect with a rope. While it was a possible route, a much nicer idea was to backtrack a bit and go around. Going around to the left side, we found a much more reasonable route for the upper ridge. At this point, it was a scramble up to the more technical summit spire.
One last steep scree and boulder slope led to the place that we would set up for the summit climb. The summit spire is a low class 5, which as far as climbing goes is pretty easy. But the consequences of a fall are great, so roping up is a good idea here. The climb began with one of us attached to the bottom of the rope, and one at the other end lead climbing up. The lead climbing part is the most dangerous job, as they are attaching rope protection to the rock as they go. Once the lead climber was done, I attached a prussic to the rope and began my way up. As I made my way up, I passed my prussic through carabiners on each protection point. The climbing itself wasn't too tough of a challenge but the loose rock and exposure to cliffs was enough to take it very seriously. We made it up to the top of our rope, which was only about halfway up the summit spire. Step by step, it wasn't so bad, but looking back down made me proud to have easily made it up that. We had a second rope with us, but we felt comfortable enough to free climb the rest. It was just a few hundred feet of easier climbing with dangerous exposure to reach the summit. As we got closer to the summit, I was feeling great. The climbing was easier than I expected and fun to do. With each step, the excitement of reaching the top grows. Finally, we made it to the top of Mount Washington. Though it is a shorter Cascade Peak, it is a great accomplishment for being one of the more steep and technical Oregon climbs. Like all mountains, hard work is rewarded with a view. Looking down into the north, you can see Hoodoo, Hayrick Butte, and Big Lake where this hike started. Next to that is Sand Mountain, the location of my very first video. Also to the north is Black Butte, a much easier summit near Sisters. Bigger peaks in that direction are Three Finger Jack and Mount Jefferson. Looking in the other direction to the south, Belknap Crater is very close. Then the biggest and best mountain view are the Sisters and Broken Top. In the very far distance to the west is our last mountain adventure, Mary's Peak. Before thinking about the descent, we took a short break to rest and enjoy the summit. Washington Summit is a great accomplishment, but it isn't complete until you make it all the way down. Heading down is often the more dangerous and scary part, mostly due to vision. 
you are constantly looking down at the dangerous exposure, and it is more difficult to see where to put your feet. Fortunately, we were rappelling down, which takes away most of that fear. While we were happy to free climb the final part, going down is a different story, so we used the extra rope we had. After that rappel, there was a small scramble down to the steepest section of the climb. One more rappel down and we would be done with the summit spire. Once we were done with the most technical part, all that was left was a ridge descent and the hike back to the trailhead. Often mountain climbs end in a hike back that everyone feels is too long. While we all wanted that part to be over, my mind was occupied feeling great about making the summit. The only other troubles we would have were running low on water due to it being so hot and mosquitoes on the lower parts of the trail. With the right experience, gear, and crew, reaching Mount Washington Summit is a very obtainable goal. We all had a great time summoning one of the less traveled peaks in Oregon.